I was a student at the University of Paris in 1954 and 55. Those were perilous years in, to be in at the University of Paris at that time because Stalin had just died and Europe was in sort of a turmoil and France was voting communist at that time. And, but uh, what I remember in this regard, in France you had to take exams to get out of school, not just accumulate so many hours. And the exam is for geography is with history. You take one exam called Histoire et Géographie, uh, History and Geography. And I asked about that. Why don't you have... They said, well, you can't separate the two. They're two sides of one coin. History without geography has no location. It has no setting, no context. It's just like events taking place on a white sheet of paper or something. But geography also, you can't do any explanation in geography. This is the important point. You can't do any explaining in geography without going back into the past and saying, this is how that place, that country, that town, that region got to be the way it is. So that's been with me all my life. At the University of Chicago is where I was introduced to the term ecology. The um, de head of the Department of Geography was a man by the name of Harland Barrow. And Professor Barrows said, well, you study a plant's relationship with its environment. You study these animals' relationship. So the human relationship with the environment is also ecology. And to me, that was the first way it got involved with, with humans the word ecology. Up to that time it was with the natural world and now you get humans involved in, in ecology. And that stayed with me. But to me geography has always been human ecology. The state of Missouri does not have a doctoral program in geography. We're, we're one of three states in the whole 50 United States that does not have a doctoral program in geography. Oh, in order to get a doctoral program, I got mine in history here, who accommodated me because they had by that time recognized a field called environmental history, which I call historical geography. And they allowed me to do a, a, a topic in that. My dissertation really is called a historical geography. So it is a geography written in the history department and I taught them a few things about geography. <laughs> And then I suppose the, the course that I enjoyed the most that I developed was a historical geography of the United States. <clears throat> it combined both geography and history. It showed how different peoples had gone into different environments and, and occupied them and <clears throat> made them productive and tied them in with the rest of the country. Mapping natural vegetation was a concern. I found, and I think it's, I'm pretty sure it was from Claire Kuchra in the botany department, that he had used the land survey notes in reconstructing vegetation in three counties in northeastern Missouri, and he advised me to use those. In retrospect, I don't think there's one American historian who would not say that the land survey was an enabler as much as anything of the settlement of the United States, of getting people on the land. Here, I think the land surveyors are unsung heroes of the American frontier. So we have a, all this preserved information and it was spatially preserved by the corner posts so when the surveyors were walking these straight lines, 
they made notes of where they left timber and enter prairie. And that was my key to locating where the prairies were. A real trove of information, these, uh, these land survey notes. So when I got to them, I looked them up in the state capitol building. That's where I told they were, and indeed that's where they were. And some very helpful woman says, well, we keep them over here. She took me over across the marble floor to this room, and I went in. She said, well, here they are. You know. <laughs> What do you do when you're looking at, there were 650 volumes. So at that time is when I got to the land survey notes. And when I moved into Saline County, I started using the land survey notes. Well, and then from those two counties, it just spread mainly into northern and western Missouri, because that's where the prairie was that I was got fascinated by. I said earlier that map was all done on free time. I didn't get any grants. I mean, that's, that's impossible for someone today in a university setting to believe that you would spend all your time doing that with no funding. It was all mine. That really surprised me how many people are interested in, in prairies. Uh, to me, there's no better evidence of that than to look at the support of the Missouri Prairie Foundation. When I see all these people from urban areas uh, who support the Missouri Prairie Foundation, but, uh, people who recognize the historic importance of it and, and the biological importance of it with its uh, species uh, that you don't get necessarily other places in abundance. Geography to me, ever since I studied in France, is the relationship of man, that means a generic man, to the environment the original ecology, and you should study the visible product of that, what, what you see in the landscape as a result of humans relating to the environment and, and the prairies. I like to read stories about prairies. Uh, those are how people can live with the grasslands. And, 